Okay, so now we're going to practice this um, skill in the way it's going to be um, tested on your final and this graphing skill. This is pretty close to the format of your final. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is graph um, graph demand. All right, do these one at a time. So you're going to use these two columns to graph demand. And I'm going to pause the video and do that. And you pause the video and do that as well. Um, actually, in case somebody doesn't know how to read this thing, I'm going to make sure. Um, so for example, I'll at least do some of them on the camera. For example, uh, the price of ski boots in Maine. First of all, we know this is price. You need to put P here so you don't lose points on the quiz. You need to put, or excuse me, on the on the final, put Q here so you don't lose points on the final. Um, and then, okay, ski boots in, let's see here, 10, uh, price, if the price of ski boots is $10, then people are going to want 10,000 of them, okay? So here's the price here. Price is $10. People are going to want 10,000 of them at that cheap of a price. Let's put over here, uh, well, we know it's quantity, Q for quantity. Oops, what have I forgot to put at the top? I've got to, or I'm going to lose points on the final, put ski boots up here as the title. Okay, ski boots. So here we go, 10, and then if the price is $20, what's the quantity demanded? It's 9 thousand ski boots, etc. You can follow the lot. Okay, now before I move on, I want to make sure I label this my first demand curve. Okay, otherwise you might get confused if you're still not sure which direction the demand curves and supply curve. I, I don't know how many students lose the points because they just didn't bother to label it before they moved on. Okay, now we're going to ignore this middle column and we're going to put the supply curve in here. The price of ten is ten dollars a boot. There's no suppliers willing to supply at that price, so we're going to ignore that one and move on to twenty dollars. Twenty dollars, one thousand suppliers are willing to provide one thousand boots. So here we have a different curve. Let's see here, twenty dollars, and the suppliers are willing to supply. One thousand at twenty dollars. So here's our first point. At thirty dollars, they're willing to supply two thousand boots, and you can see there's zero over here. Zero at ten dollars. You can see the logic. Plot your curves, and voila, there's equilibrium. All right. So once you have that second curve, make sure that you put supply. One, label it as a supply curve, but then you also need to plot equilibrium. This is essential, or you're going to get lost. So, get a different color, and plot your equilibrium. Here we go. I'm going to put here. By now, you should know how to plot equilibrium. I'm going to call this PE1. P, oops, QE1. Make sure your numbers match, one and one. All right, so that's where the market's at right now. Now, before you move on, you need to fill out the answers to the questions. If you don't, you will forget where equilibrium was at a certain point. Each one of these things builds upon itself. Don't move on. Once you have graphed this according to the instructions, follow the next step. If you keep graphing, you're going to get lost and you're going to miss a lot of points. You just graphed the demand curve and the supply curve. Mark and label the equilibrium point. We just did that. Now, write out the equilibrium price and quantity of ski boots. So this is where they check whether or not you can read a graph. Do you know what that means? Are you going to write it out? Do you know what this means? So here you write equilibrium price is 
$60. Don't forget that dollars, that's worth a point. Equilibrium quantity, now if you just write 5, you're going to lose points. You're not going to get this point. This is not 5, it's 5 what? It's 5,000, and it's 5,000 ski boots. Equilibrium quantity is 5,000 ski boots. Okay, you need to write all that out or you will not earn those points on the final. Okay, now we're ready to move on to the next step and see what happens to the market. Consider the following scenario. Imagine today's Portland, Portland, Maine. Herald's headlines read, three feet of snow in two weeks. Now, what's that going to do? Three feet of snow, all of a sudden, what's that going to do to ski boots? Who is going to get excited about that snow? Well, skiers are going to get excited about that snow. The weather has changed. Now their tastes are changed. In the summertime, they don't care about ski boots. They don't need their ski boots. That's not part of their tastes or attitudes. They're not thinking about those ski boots, unless they're professionals. But now that the snow is falling, all of a sudden their attitude about ski boots changes. And so demand is going to shift what direction? It's going to shift to the right. It's going to increase. So you have this new demand curve. People are getting excited about ski boots. And you call this D2. Okay, it doesn't matter where you draw it. I prefer to exaggerate so I have more room to work. But that is the new. Now, before you do anything else, plot your new equilibrium. Okay, plot your new equilibrium. This equilibrium doesn't exist anymore, really. So I'm going to plot this new equilibrium before I forget, and because there's going to end up with a bunch of curves on this graph. And you're going to forget where equilibrium was at a particular time. So now that you have that new curve, go ahead and plot equilibrium. Quantity equilibrium 2, price equilibrium price 2. Make sure your numbers match. Okay, here's your new equilibrium. Now let's go back to the paper and figure out what questions we need to ask in writing. Again, don't move on to the next step or you're going to get lost here. Draw and correctly label the new curve on the graph. Mark and label the new equilibrium point. Explain, based on the headline, what's likely to happen in the market to snow boots. Well, we just explained. Dr demand increased. So that's what you write. Demand increased. And that's worth points. This is worth a point. This is worth a point. Due to, why did demand increase? And you could say uh, increase in, oops, in desire for ski boots. Okay, that is your attitude. Increase in desire or increase in, in taste. You want to use that word? Increase of taste for ski boots. Okay, that is the reason for it. Weather. Now, next, consider if the shopkeepers continue to sell ski boots at $60. Okay, what if they continue to sell ski boots at $60? Now, we realize $60 used to be equilibrium, but it's not equilibrium anymore. Okay, that's the old equilibrium. This is the current equilibrium. This is just a price that's below equilibrium. So just as we practiced before with the scenario of the hotel rooms, this is another person keeping their price at the old equilibrium, and it's going to cause them problems. So um, imagine this is the price. This is not equilibrium. This is just an arbitrary price now. This is equilibrium. So we're going to put this other color here to show this strange price. Call this P3. It's not an equilibrium price because this is equilibrium. And then what is that going to do? Where does this price intersect the current supply curve? 
Well, there's only one supply curve so far. This is where it in intersects. So we're going to take this down here. And again, make sure we're matching. P3, this is going to be quantity. Ooh, this is quantity because it's intersecting supply. This is quantity supplied. Make your numbers match. 3. And where is this price affecting customers? Here's where the price is affecting customers. This is the demand curve. This is the old demand curve. It doesn't matter anymore. This is where the price is hitting the demand curve. because This is the current demand curve. We take this down. Again, this is not equilibrium quantity. This is quantity. It's hitting the demand curve. Quantity demanded. 3, matching. So what do we have here? Remember. What happens when the price is set below equilibrium? Remember, quantity supplied, quantity supplied is closer, it's only 5 here. Quantity demanded is 9,000. Quantity supplied is 5,000. Quantity demanded is 9,000. Quantity supplied is less than quantity demanded, and we have a shortage. So back here on this sh sheet, after you've graphed, draw and label this situation on the graph, which we just did. We've put the quantity supplied, quantity demanded, and then we answer this question in words. Oops, that should say snow boots. What's the answer? It's a shortage. Now, there's one last scenario, and this is why you have to stay organized here. What would occur if the price of plastic or petroleum-based material needed to make ski boots increased by 35%? Okay, plastic is an ingredient. What do we call that in economic terms, an ingredient for ski boots? That's called an input. Remember, what happens if the cost right, of inputs goes up? It's increasing by 35%. Does that affect the demand curve or the supply curve? Well, if you did well on the last quiz, you know that an increase in cost of input increases supply. Okay? Excuse me, decreases. Decreases supply. An increase in cost of inputs decreases supply. People who are in the business, they can't make as much of a profit. That discourages them. That's going to decrease supply. So we have to plot that here on the curve. And here we're going to show supply decreasing, shifting to the left. Here we go. A new supply curve, S2. And now here's where people are going to get really confused. Okay? You need to make sure you have the most current demand curve and the most current supply curve when you plot your third equilibrium. Okay? This instruction say, Put the new curve on the graph, and then mark and label new equilibrium. You have to remember that you need to look for the newest demand curve and the newest supply curve. Some of you are going to mess up, and you're going to put it here. Some of you are going to mess up, and you're going to put it here. But you need the newest with the newest, and that point is here. This is the new equilibrium point right here, and we show it with our dotted lines. And again, these are all worth points, each one of these. And this looks so hard to read. Um, quantity, equilibrium, we've run out of room down here. And this is, we've had three prices, we're going to call this four. Equilibrium, quantity four. We take this over to the price. Equilibrium, price, number four. Remember, make sure they match. Okay. And so. That is what you're going to have to do on the final in order to get a good score.